When it comes to chambering precision rifle barrels, there is a single step in the process that I always find to be both time consuming and frustrating, and that is dialing in the barrel to run perfectly true with the lathe spindle. This product is called the True Bore Alignment System from Straight Shot Gunsmithing. This is gonna make that process less painful and a lot quicker. And in this video, we're gonna get hands on with it. Gavin Gu here from ultimatereloader.com. If you've been watching the channel, you've seen a bunch of gunsmithing videos involving things like chambering rifle barrels and muzzle threading, muzzle crowning, all of that. And what I've been using for these processes is my Precision Matthews PM1440 GT, very high quality, all Taiwanese made lathe with Japanese spindle bearings, very, very tight run out. And what I've been using to align barrels for both things like muzzle work or chamber work is a standard four jaw chuck with some aluminum pads and an outboard spider, which I fabricated myself. This is the basic methodology that Gordy Gritters teaches in some of his videos and his week long class, which I've taken. This system is called the True Bore Alignment System, and it's gonna allow me to precisely dial in things in a radial and angular fashion with two different types of adjustments. What I have here is the True Bore Alignment System, which is a mounting plate. Mine has a D15 cam lock spindle here on the Precision Matthews PM1440 GT. There's a variety of different mounting plates for a variety of different types of spindle systems that you'd find on a wide variety of lathes. And then here I've got a Gator six jaw chuck. There are other chucks that are supported with the True Bore alignment system. And if you go to the product page, you'll see that full list of options. So in this video, I'm gonna get both the True Bore alignment system and the chuck that we'll use with it out of the boxes. We'll get them cleaned up. We're gonna get it installed on the lathe and I'm gonna show you how to both adjust it get it all dialed in and then do a barrel alignment. So without further ado, we're gonna get this stuff out of the boxes. That is a good, got a good bit of weight to it. So I got everything out of the respective boxes, got everything out of the respective bags, sprayed everything down with WD-40 and wiped everything down. I like to use WD-40 just to get that factory preservative oil off of parts. Everything on this side is what's included with the True Bore alignment system, which is a mounting plate that you specify. It's available for a variety of spindles. Here I've got D15 to go with my Precision Matthews PM1440 GT. And then it's also got the ball and socket inter internal workings that's a part of the way that the true bore alignment system can do its axial and radial alignment. And then we've got the chuck. These are available for purchase through Straight Shot Gunsmithing. You can also purchase them separately. Uh, what I have here is a Gator six inch six jaw chuck that comes with the mounting bolts, the key, Allen keys and printed materials. I also should mention that the True Bore alignment system is now available with this updated owner's manual. So the next thing I'm gonna do is to take my cam lock pins and install those using another chuck that I have as a reference for the height. So now that I've got my cam lock pins installed and secured, it's time to get the True Bore alignment system body installed on the lathe. So I removed the chuck that I had on the lathe and I cleaned the spindle. That means we're ready to mount the main body of the True Bore alignment system. I'm just gonna carefully align the pins and then I'm gonna find my number one pin here. I'll probably stamp the True Bore alignment system adapter plate here so that uh, I can keep number one in the same 
orientation each time I attach the uh, the T bath system here. Okay, so I'm going to skip one, go to the next one, skip one, go to the next one. Then I'm going to grab the ones that we skipped last time. And then go ahead and tighten them each down. Two, three, four, five, six. And I like to go around one more time just to make sure everything feels solid. Okay, we are mounted. So I just completed the initial setup and dial-in of the T-Bass system. The spindle adapter plate, the T-Bass, and the chuck. And I'm going to walk through what I did step by step. For all of these initial alignment and dial-in procedures, I'm using a Yellow Jacket digital adjustable torque wrench. This has a 3 8 inch drive on it. I've got a 5 16 hex drive adapter. And I actually fashioned up in an eight millimeter hex drive uh, for this three eighths inch ratchet system. The only thing this is needed for is kind of the, the next step, which is to tighten the three bolts that mount the T-Bass components to the spindle adapter plate. This is 35 foot pounds. And once we get that done, we can start our dial-in procedure. With our mounting bolts torqued down, we can now take a look at the initial dial-in of the T-Bass system itself in preparation for mounting the chuck. The first thing to take a look at is your axial alignment. I placed an indicator near here at the top. We've got these axial alignment screws that you can progressively tighten and loosen the opposite screws in order to get that wobble on the needle down to near zero. I worked on this progressively and got it down to a total indicator reading of about a half thousandth of an inch, plenty good for this initial dialing. When we're finished with that axial alignment, we can then look at radial alignment. Radial alignment, you can think of as the end of this ground rod we're holding by the chuck. Is it gonna wobble out here on the end? In other words, is the angle correct? Is there coaxial alignment between whatever work we're holding and the spindle axis itself? And in order to adjust that, we take a look at these radial alignment screws that are on this side of the T-Bass system. And in a like manner, we loosen one and tighten the other until with an indicator reading on the interface where this chuck is clamped down to, is it gonna run true on that particular face? And again, I progressively worked on things until I got a total indicator reading of about half thousandth of an inch. And at this point, ready to mount the chuck. The chuck mounts with three Allen bolts, mounts to the face on the inside of this outer T-Bass plate. What I like about this system is that there's plenty of adjustment latitude. I put the three bolts in finger tight, and then I gave them just a little bit of a tighten, got my needle centered. I had plus or minus 20 thou. I had 20 thou either direction, so a total indicator reading of 40 thousandths of an inch. And with a dead blow hammer, I was able to hit the top of the truck and to work it round and round and round until I saw that total indicator ring sweep down to about a thousandth of an inch. Then I tightened the three bolts a little bit more, went through the same process, little taps this time, and then started to torque them down more formally. Okay, so these tightened to 60 foot pounds and I was very careful while I was tightening them to take a look at my total indicator reading to make sure I wasn't getting things out of whack as I was tightening these bolts. I probably went through about four different levels of torque working my way up to that 60 foot pounds. And when I was finished, we have a really nice, again, about half thousandth total indicator reading. Remember, this initial dial-in process is really just getting things into that sweet spot center range for that axial alignment direction and the radial alignment direction. And that gives us plenty of movement when we do put something in the chuck, a barrel, an action, a bolt, whatever that happens to be to get things the rest of the way dialed in. So now we're ready for our first dial in. I'm using an interrapid half thou dial test indicator and I'm using the same ground rod that we were using previously. And our goal here is to be able to move the carriage and spin the spindle and have very little 
needle movement on the dial test indicator in multiple positions, basically all along a section of rod that you're going to traverse. And we already did our axial alignment and our radial alignment when we were getting the chuck installed, and it looks like we're doing pretty good here axially right by the chuck. So what we're going to do is we're going to move the carriage over. We're going to see what our indicator movement is here. We've got plus and minus about two thousandths for four thousandths total indicator reading. We're going to go ahead and use our radial adjustment screws, bring that down close to zero, and then go back towards the truck, adjust our axial screws, and then repeat the process. And we're going to converge, hopefully, down to close to zero run out. When we're done with that, we're going to torque things down with the digital torque wrench at about 30 foot pounds. So I'm going to go ahead and get going on this. We'll keep going back and forth and we'll get back down to that desired result. Okay, so we've got very little needle movement here. We'll call that good for the first pass. Back inboard towards the chuck. You can see we have movement here. So we're gonna go ahead and fix that with the axial screws. And back out to the outboard side. Looking good here. We can go back inboard. Rinse and repeat. So we can see our error converge each time we go through this process. I'm pretty happy with how we're aligned now, so now I'm going to start to torque things down and hopefully not disrupt my alignment in the process. Okay, so it looks like we've got very little needle movement in both of our test positions. What I found to work well for myself was each time I was incrementally adding torque, I would go just beyond the center point on the dial test indicator and then go to the 180 degrees opposite, tighten it down to just beyond, just beyond, just beyond, and it's kind of splitting the difference there. And then finally you'll end up at a result that's gonna work for whatever machining you're gonna do. Well, I'm really happy to have the TrueBore alignment system finally in my shop. I think it's gonna be a great complement to this Precision Matthews PM 1440 GT lathe. If you're interested in your own TrueBore alignment system, Go over to Straight Shot Gunsmithing. You'll find all of the different spindle types that are supported, all of the different configurations, and so on and so forth. Also, I'm going to have more stories. This is just sort of my debut with this tool. I'm going to be doing things like muzzle threading, things like uh, barrel chambering, that sort of thing. So you're going to want to make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of those stories. Also, first link in the video description is the full article. Lots more information there as well. That concludes this video. That means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe with notifications because you're not gonna wanna miss the content I've got coming up. Also, links down in the video description. I'm on Patreon and I've got Ultimate Reloader shirts at the Ultimate Reloader store. Any support that you show is most appreciated. Thank you again for watching. Until next time, happy shooting and happy reloading. Thank you.